Also remember that the problem is happening here. So it's the brain wants sweet. What I've suggested to you guys, if you make the, the very strong, I'm going to decide to do this, and just stop buying foods with added sugar. So just look at the package, does it say added sugar? If it does, just don't buy it. It's not hard. It may be hard in the beginning, but you'll be shocked at how many things you can find if you shop where I tell you to shop. If, if you're shopping, you know, your average shop right, you're not going to find it. But if you shop at places that are health conscious and, or have aisles that are health conscious, it's not hard to find. But even in those health conscious aisles, you'll be shocked at how much added sugar is in the product. So we get to this because of added sugars. That's, that's what we're getting here. I've said that you can eat fruit for sure, certainly eat fruit, because fruit has fiber, it has enzymes. There have been studies with fruit where we've allowed people to overeat fruit. They do not have the same deleterious effects as when you give them high fructose corn syrup out of the context of that food, meaning the fruit itself. Uh, the juice, the fruit. Yes, so the juice, so orange juice is horrible. Why? Because you're removing all of the fiber, right? It's just plain, it's just straight fructose. So, but if you eat the orange itself, you're, you're way better off. But I've also discussed with you guys fruits that are way better options than other fruits. Um, I'm a big fan of berries. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of putting things like lemons and limes and water. There's, there's lots of options for you. I tell you that you can, you know, kiwis. And there's different things that you guys can have. I'm, I'm a big fan of pomegranates. But m mix them up, right? So, some fruits you can argue are better than others, but just in general. Fruit isn't the problem. It is, it, is the, it is the high fructose corn syrup that gets put into these foods out of the context of their natural fibers and enzymes. Is there a significant difference between dried fruits and fresh? Yeah, huge difference. Huge, thank you for saying that. If you, so, so dried fruits, the, the, you'll, you, these, are, these are things that you guys, some of you know, are in the manual, but you, you don't eat dried fruits because when you take the, the, when you're drying out the fruits, you're removing, uh, but basically what you're doing is you're, you're taking a bolus of, of sugar and putting it into your body without the context of those enzymes that I'm talking about, okay? Because they're, because they're dried out. Um, and it does have a, 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 so things like figs, raisins, um, you know, dried, uh, um, what do you call them, like prunes and things like that. You want to have the, the natural fruit itself. Any other questions on any of your packages? Um, the point is, I just get very confused. Yeah. Everything is so related. It's like has everything famous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so what Maria and so that's great that you brought that up. So one of the biggest things um, that we focus on the last few UTC meetings, and, and I added in the manual, was linoleic acids. But this was not a new topic. Many, if many of you go, if you go back in the very first manual, you will see that I talk about omega-6 and omega-3. Uh, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 being 15 to 30 to 1 in the average person. It should be more like 1 to 1, 2 to 1. That was a topic 15 years ago. But what we're seeing more specifically is the very specific omega-6 uh, acid, which is linoleic acid, being the culprit. It's not that you can't have any of it, it's just that we eat way too much. And the cost of that we went into has, a, to make a very long story short, it has a tremendous, we know this for a fact, a tremendous inflammatory effect on the body. It's extremely prone to oxidative stress. It stores in your body fat, um, but its half-life is over two years, which means to get half of it out, you need two years. So it, there's, there's a whole bunch of things we talked about with linoleic acid itself, but you will hear more and more it being linked to heart disease because of these properties that I'm describing. It's, it's it, because we eat so much, because we're overweight, because it's most prone to oxidative stress. It is, and, and people that eat more linoleic acids tend to overeat more. So they've isolated for linoleic acid. Just like we talk about sugar, it is another thing that makes you overeat. Um, so what I, the main message to make it, because because you're right, it's hard. Because even when you eat healthy, it's hard. The biggest thing I wanted you guys to get out of that was 
every time you eat out, recognize you're just eating a bolus of linoleic acid because they cook everything in restaurants in the cheapest oil possible, which is soybean oil. So unless you know what they're cooking with, um, that's why having control of your food is so important. So, you know, most of you don't just voluntarily use soybean oil, you know, when you cook, or, or you know, some of you may use canola oil and things like that. These are the types of oils I'm talking about to get away from. So seed oils in general, you move away from, and you have, you can have other oils that we've talked about, avocado oil, oil oil, et cetera. But the, the biggest thing to make it practical when you look at how much the average person eats out and door dashes food, it's, it's astronomical. And just, I assure you that that's where you're getting the largest percentages of your linoleic acids. It's not, you know, in the, um, in the almond milk, right? Like where there is, there's going to be some uh, linoleic acid in there because it's going to have things like sunflower oil and things like that. But um, there's a big difference between that and cooking, you know, a burger in soybean oil and consuming that all the time. Um, I use this product and it says high oleic sunflower. Yeah, different. So there's linoleic acid and oleic acid, two very different molecules. The oleic acid in, which is found mostly in extra virgin olive oil, is actually very good for you. Believe it or not, there's a lot of research that shows that oleic acid can help you lose weight. You can go on PubMed, and, and Google um, PubMed and look at lino, uh, excuse me, oleic acid and weight loss. I've done different, um, I, in fact, like one of my videos during the COVID thing, I put out a whole thing on oleic acid, challenging people to just add olive oil onto everything you eat for a week and tell me if you gained weight. Um, and, and people that did that, they, they didn't. I mean, when you think about how calorie dense uh, oil is, it's very calorie dense food. Um, the thing is, is that it tends to make you eat less later, which is great. It's very satiating. Um, it's highly anti inflammatory. There's lots of great benefits to oleic acid. But yeah, it's confusing because a lot of these things sound the same. There's a, to make it even more confusing. So you hear how much that sounds the same oleic acid and linoleic acid. That sounds a lot. They're completely different. There's also conjugated linoleic acid, which is a completely different molecule. Complete, so even though it has the word linoleic acid in it, conjugated linoleic, it's literally chemically completely different. And I actually talked about, if you look in the manual, you'll see me talk about CLA, right? Conjugated linoleic acid as, uh, as a benefit to eating meat. And I explain why in there. But uh, that's why these things are so important to talk about because people see things and the more, the better education you have, I always say the better education you have, the better questions you can ask.